I believe most of you have heard of alternating current, or we called it AC. It's the type of electricity that is mostly used to power our homes and run our appliances. But have you ever wondered what exactly AC is? How is it generated? And why do we rely on it so heavily? Well, today, we will dive into the fascinating world of alternating current, AC, and uncover its mysteries. If you enjoy the content, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell, so you never miss any update. In our previous videos, we often used batteries as the power source to illustrate various examples. Battery is a prime example of direct current, or what we commonly refer to as DC. When we talk about DC, it refers to electric current that flows consistently in one direction and maintaining a constant magnitude. However, it is widely known that most power distribution systems, as well as the electricity supply to our homes, utilize AC waveform instead of DC. AC, short for alternating current, refers to an electric current that undergoes periodic changes in both its magnitude and direction of flow. The electric current will oscillate, reversing its direction back and forth over time. The AC waveform can be represented by a sinusoidal wave. In a complete cycle, it consists of the first half cycle in the positive direction, followed by another half cycle in the negative direction. The magnitude of AC current flows up and down, increasing and decreasing the magnitude along the wave. But, you might wonder how the power receiving devices, such as light bulbs, are affected by these fluctuations. Normally, a light bulb would have brightened and then dim in response. But, why in our homes that receive alternating current? The light bulb appears to maintain a steady and consistent brightness. In fact, the frequencies used in our electrical power systems are either 50 Hz or 60 Hz. The frequency determines how often the waveform repeats in one second. For example, if the frequency is 50 Hz, it means that, in one second, the current is switching its direction back and forth for 50 times. This switching happens very quickly, much faster than our eyes can see. It is similar to the situation when you watch a cartoon on TV. The cartoon is actually made up of many individual pictures, shown one after another. When these pictures are played rapidly, it creates the illusion of continuous movement and we don't notice any gaps or pauses between the pictures. Similarly, in the case of alternating current, the direction of the current switches back and forth very rapidly, this switching happens so fast that our eyes can't catch the individual changes. As a result, devices like light bulbs appear to glow consistently without any visible flickering, even though the magnitude of an AC waveform is increasing and decreasing. Now, let's explore how alternating current is generated. Alternating current is produced using a device known as AC generator, and its working principle is based on Faraday's principle of electromagnetic induction. This principle explains how a changing magnetic field can induce an electric current in a conductor. Here, the key idea is the magnetic field must be changing. To understand this concept, let's imagine having a magnet and a coil of wire. The magnet will have magnetic field around it. This magnetic field is strongest when closest to the magnet and gradually weakens as the distance increases. Now, when we move the magnet back and forth near the wire coil, something interesting happens. As the magnet approaches the coil, the magnetic field around the coil becomes stronger, and more magnetic field lines cut across the wire. This change in the magnetic field induces an increasing electric current to flow through the wire. As a result, if we connect a bulb to the wire, it will become brighter due to the greater current passing through it. On the other hand, when we move the magnet away from the coil, the magnetic field around the wire becomes weaker. Consequently, fewer magnetic field lines cut across the wire, leading to a decrease in the induced current. Now, the bulb will become dimmer in the process. It's important to note that when the magnet is not moving, even if it is placed very close to the wire coil, the magnetic field remains unchanged. In this static situation, no current is induced in the wire. Now, let's look at how this concept is applied in AC generator. 
To make it easier to understand, we'll consider a simplified, basic setup of an AC generator that includes a permanent magnet and wire coils connected to load. However, it's important to note that in real-world scenarios, AC generators are much more complex and involve additional components. As the permanent magnet rotates, the changing magnetic field will create an electric current in the wire, thus supplying power to the connected load. Let's take a closer look at how this works. At the starting point of zero degrees, the current is zero. As the magnet rotates clockwise, the north and south poles are moving nearer to the coil, and the cutting of magnetic flux across the wire coils increases gradually, causing the current to rise, and reaches its maximum value at 90 degrees. As the rotation continues, the north and south poles are moving away from the coil, and the cutting of magnetic flux decreases, resulting in a decrease in current. By the time the rotation reaches 180 degrees, the current returns to zero. Now, something interesting happens. As the magnet keeps rotating, the north and south poles have actually switched the position. This results in the direction of the current being reversed, and is represented by negative values. Continuing from 180 degrees, the current reaches its highest negative value at 270 degrees. Finally, as the rotation progresses, the cutting of magnetic flux reduces, causing the current to decrease gradually until it returns to zero. With that, a full cycle completes. Remember that we talked about the frequency of our electrical system, which is typically set at 50 or 60 hertz. This means that the magnet needs to complete 50 or 60 rotations, and the generated AC current will go through 50 or 60 cycles in just one second. However, as we explained earlier in this video, the switching happens so quickly that it's difficult for our eyes to notice any changes. This explains why AC devices, such as light bulb, appear to run consistently without any visible flickering. To better understand the AC in a more practical way, we can determine its RMS, or root mean square value. The concept of RMS value has a long history, but in short, it is developed to simplify and understand the equivalent value of AC waveforms. Using a scaling factor of square root of 2. We can easily obtain the RMS value by dividing the peak value with this scaling factor. This RMS value also represents the equivalent direct current that would dissipate the same amount of power as the average power dissipated by the alternating current. In general, the RMS value is commonly used as the voltage and current rating. For instance, the voltage levels in different countries, such as 230 volts and 110 volts, are actually referring to their RMS values. People may wonder, since DC can deliver the power to the connected device, for its functioning, but why do we still complicate things, by introducing another AC waveform, which seems to be unnecessary? For example, there are DC-powered LED bulbs, DC fans, DC hair dryers, DC refrigerators, and DC air conditioning units available in the market. Most AC electrical equipment can be found in the DC type, but why do we still need AC? The reason behind is that, in the past, AC was found to be more suitable for transmitting power over long distances. AC has the advantage of being able to change its voltage level using transformer. This allows the voltage to be stepped up for efficient transmission and stepped down for safe distribution. DC, on the other hand, cannot achieve this function back then. For many years, most electrical transmission and distribution systems have been based on AC, and the AC system is already well established. However, in today's world, with the advancements in DC technology, it is now possible to use HVDC or high voltage direct current for transmission. Both AC and HVDC technologies have their own advantages and are used in different applications based on specific needs and constraints. That wraps up today's video. I hope today's video has helped you better understand what is alternating current, or in short AC, that we utilize every day. If you enjoyed our video, please remember to like, subscribe, turn on the notification bells, and share it with others. Thank you.